In today's video, I'm going to be doing a slow living January recap and February reset. Let's get right into it. Okay, so let's get a couple of things out of the way. The first thing is, yes, I do sound sick because I am very sick still. I have been sick over the past couple of days and I am actually feeling the best that I've felt over the past week. I feel like I was going in and out of consciousness. I don't know what's going on. But I am feeling a lot better, thankfully, better enough for me to do this video. And I just wanted to make sure that I got at least one video out to y'all. So here, here we are. Um, but please excuse any delusional rambling if that ends up happening. I hope not. I will try to keep this video brief because I am so delirious. But the other thing that I wanted to get out the way is I've never done a video like this before. I've never done like recaps or resets for the following month or going into the new month which welcome february but i was thinking that i could probably do it this time around this year around because now that i'm doing a lot more videos on youtube it might be cool to do some series and i don't have too many series going on right now so this could be one of them you let me know i know this is not the greatest start to it but you let me know in the comments if you're interested in seeing more of these, and I will definitely do them. I'll try to center these resets slash recaps around slow living because, of course, that's what this channel is all about. And I kind of want to emphasize how I'm able to implement slow living into my day-to-day -day every single month. So perhaps it's a little bit more accessible, easy to digest, easy to kind of comprehend on the day-to-day. So it doesn't feel so impossible to be on a slow living journey if you feel that you might be in that mindset, if that makes sense. Anyway, those are the things that I just wanted to get out of the way and I am losing breath with every sentence that I speak. So let's get right into it. The first thing that I wanted to talk about is my January recap, of course. And I did want to kind of quickly highlight the goals that I was able to achieve in January. January always feels like the longest month ever, and this year was, you know, still the case, and I feel like I got so much done, much more than I feel like I would get done in any other month. Perhaps it's because January feels so long, or perhaps it's the beginning of the year and I'm, like, really invigorated. I don't know, but I finished one book this month. I had no expectations for finishing any books this month. Like I said, in previous videos, I have no plans for like monthly reading goals or yearly reading goals. So I'm really proud of the fact that I was able to finish a book. It was an audio book. It was glossy. And I talked about this in another video, but I don't know. I'm just really proud that I was able to do that. And I also started The Artist's Way. And I am now in the thick of things when it comes to The Artist's Way. It's a 12-week course if you haven't heard of The Artist's Way. It comes in the form of a book and, you know, you kind of just go through the weeks on your own. I'm I'm sort of looking at it as like a college course. And so I have highlights. I have like little sticky notes and stuff like that. And of course, one of the main things about the artist's way is that you have to start doing morning pages and it's like a non-negotiable. You have to do it every single day. Of course, the week that I started doing my morning pages is the week that I got sick. So I was only able to do one day of morning pages this week, but next week will be a better week for me. But I'm just happy to say that I started it because I got The Artist's Way. I got a copy of it way back in September 2023 for my birthday, and I, I didn't even touch it. So the fact that I'm actually going through it and starting the morning pages is something that I am proud of. And I will just say the morning pages is 100% something related to the slow living because it is three pages of uninterrupted just whatever is on your mind pages that you write every single day and I'm definitely going to be implementing those morning pages into my morning routine so I don't know how long it's going to take me on average to do three pages of uninterrupted uh free freehand writing but we'll see but that's going to be part of my new morning routine and I'll probably do a new morning routine, like an updated morning routine video for y'all soon. But that is definitely a slow living practice that I can get behind. Okay, uh, it says here in my notes for me to check my journal. So this is going to be hard to do with a mic and then have to open my 
<laughs> my little bag here. Let me see if I can do it. I have stuff all over the place. This is what happens when you turn your couch into like a makeshift office. Okay, I think I got it. Okay. So there's something that I do every single month at the end of every single month. It's a monthly reflection, so it's very similar to what we're doing right now. I put it into my journal here, and it's always the same prompts. I put these prompts into my journal, and I answer them every single month. So the first prompt is my top three accomplishments. The second prompt is how do I feel about long-term goals? Uh, the next is focus for next month. The next is what challenges I face. I have to cough. Um, <laughs> the next is how do I overcome those challenges? So my top three accomplishments is uh, what I wrote is that I posted consistently on YouTube. I started The Artist's Way, which I just talked about with y'all. And then I played one game and read one book. So we kind of went through a couple of those things together. By the way, the game that I played was Firewatch on the Steam Deck. Oh my gosh, y'all, doing this video is a struggle. I just went into a coughing fit, but um, yeah, Firewatch was really, really good. Highly recommend that game. It was incredible. I finished it in five hours, but I'm sure you can finish it in much less of a time. I just got lost far too many times, but anyway, very good game. So those are my top three accomplishments. How I feel about long-term goals. I feel very good. I feel like I touched on over half of my goals in some sort of way, in a positive way. And I think that's incredible for it being the first month of the year. Like I said, I don't know how I got it done, but I got it done. Um, so I feel really, really good about that. And my focus for next month is actually pretty low key. I just want to start researching the garden and the kitchen projects that I have. Of course, the garden is just like researching the garden, like the seeds and getting that all set up for spring. And then for the kitchen, I think I've mentioned this, I want to paint the kitchen cabinets. So I need to do some research on how exactly I'm going to go about that project. If I'm going to do it DIY, if I'm going to do half DIY and then hire someone, I don't know, we'll figure it out. Uh, what challenges do I face for next month? And this prompt is directly correlated to what my focus is, which I just mentioned as the garden and the kitchen. And so the challenge that I pretty much wrote down is that I need to make time to focus on doing that research, which I, I feel like I can definitely get that done. Those are two pretty low key type of things to research. And then how am I going to overcome that challenge? I wrote just scheduling it in because I'm actually feeling really confident this upcoming month. And I also do a couple of things at the bottom of my journal, which aren't things that, I don't know, I typically share because it's very uh, specific to me. But the other prompts, I do highly recommend you do them at the end of every single month. I kind of talk about them on my social media platforms like Instagram and on my newsletter and stuff. But I don't think I've ever formally said it here on YouTube, but feel free to use those prompts at the end of every single month. That's exactly what I do. And the the other things is skin and fitness. So I kind of just do a ranking, a personal ranking out of five. And so for my skin, I did three and a half out of five. And for fitness, I did three and a half out of five. The reason why I gave those rankings is because I just started a new skincare regimen. So we're kind of like in the midway point. Uh, but a little bit more than the midway point because I'm actually taking action in a positive way. And then for fitness, I did do some challenging workouts, which if you all remember from when I talked about my 2024 goals, I wanted to just challenge myself in terms of fitness and exercise. And I feel like in January, I did challenge myself, but not that much. I feel like I could go a little bit more intense. So I gave myself a three out of five. Since I have my journal open, I did want to actually show you how I set up for the following month. And before I get into that, I did want to quickly mention that I did like a monthly report. Do y'all still do reports? It was a TikTok trend for a bit. And I feel like we should keep that trend going because I loved that trend so much. It's basically report, but it's like an acronym. And every single letter of the word report means something. So for example, R is reading, E is eating, P is playing, O is obsessing. 
Oh, I forgot the rest. <laughs> my brain is not working 100% right now, but I did do a blog post of my monthly report. So instead of doing it in a weekly sense, which is the trend to do it every single week, I did it just as a month. And I talked about all of the different acronym things and all of my favorites for the month. So if you want to check that out, I'll put that in the description box. And I do also recommend you give that one a try. I had somebody reach out to me and tell me that that was like a fantastic idea to do it monthly instead of weekly because weekly can get a little bit intense. And also if you're like, obsessing with something I feel like you should probably obsess with it a little bit more than a week so monthly is probably a little bit more realistic for most of us but anyway uh so how I set up my journal for February is that now I'm using a little bit more of a traditional planner so this isn't really that intensive at all I kind of just look at the month at a glance here and if I have any standout dates that I know that I need to pencil in I pencil it in for example uh, the Super Bowl is on February 11th, so I just wrote that in there, and I'm taking the following day off, so I wrote that in there as well, but things like that, as well as birthdays, Valentine's Day, all that good stuff, and then there's a little bit in the corner here, and that bit in the corner, what I do is I make a little mini list that correlates directly to my 2024 goals. So I'm making sure that I always am looking at my 2024 goals from that large sense and bringing it over with me every single month to ensure that I don't drop off because I feel like you can write down your goal somewhere in a list and then you can tuck that list away and you can completely forget about it, completely neglect it, and you'll never actually remember what your goals were for the year. So doing this actually helps a lot. And so I also have other notes and stuff for the month in particular, but one note that I have here is to put money away, which is part of my 2024 goals to put money away every single month. So it's just a great way to make sure that you're staying on top of your goals as opposed to like forgetting what you wrote down at the beginning of the year, if that makes sense. Oh, by the way, I did also want to show you this is so random. I apologize. My brain is all over the place. At the start of the video, I talked about morning pages and starting the artist's way and how excited I am about it. And I meant to share with you the book that I got for my morning pages, my notebook. Um, not for any reason at all, just for the fact that I absolutely love the way that it looks. But I know that's probably not even relevant anymore, but I'm still going to mention it because the book is sitting here waiting for me to show it off. Anyway, I apologize, but this is what the book looks like. I got it at McNally Jackson's in Manhattan. It's just a notebook. It has like no lines in it. It's like a blank notebook, but I like that it has a lot of pages. It is very thick. So if I'm doing three pages every single day, I did the math. I'm doing three pages every single day, seven days in a week, and 21 pages, I forgot the math at this point, but at 21 pages a week is a lot. So you need a, you need a big book, or you just need a lot of little books. So I decided to go with the former, and I just wanted to show you how pretty it looks. It says heirloom in the back, and it says that it's made from the sustainable materials, and it looks like the website is lilyandlionel.com. So... If you're interested in checking that out, there you go. I actually think that's all I have. Once again, I this is a scrambled video. What I anticipate doing for videos like this in the future when I feel a lot better is to basically go through, you know, like slow living highlights that I have experienced in the month prior. Uh, my goals, which inevitably are inclusive in the in my slow living journey because I try to do that. I try to have goals that are correlated to slow living and I try to implement slow living into my day-to-day -day routine. And I wanted to kind of like set up my journal, set up my calendar and get things ready to go for the following month and how that looks like when you're trying to instill slow living into your lifestyle. Now, I know this video isn't necessarily 100% like that, it was a very like sloppy version of that because I very sloppily prepared for February because I got sick in the last week of January. So things didn't go too well for me this month. And 
perhaps I shouldn't have done this video, but I just wanted to give you a realistic look into what's going on with me personally and how I'm pivoting for this final week into February. I know when you're watching this video, it's already February, but I hope this gave you like a good loose idea. And I promise the video, the video for February, the February recap in March reset is going to look 10 times better. So, you know, don't hold me to this standard. I, it's only going to get better from here. And I also want to say sorry for the audio. If the audio is absolutely horrendous. I am gasping for air while I'm talking to y'all. Anyway, I'm going to cut it off here. So the audio literally went completely out as soon as I said that I was going to end the video off. I don't know what happened, but I want to say thank you so much for listening or watching this video if you made it this far. I know it was a struggle for y'all probably. It was a struggle for me too, but I appreciate you. So I think it goes without saying I'm only going to be doing one video this week. I hope that's okay, but I am proud of the fact that we did do two videos every single week in January. That was awesome and I had so much fun. I hope I can do more of those in February in the months onward, but thank you so, so much for being here. I appreciate you and I will talk to you in next week's video.